boys and girls in virtual land. Today, we will be learning about the loyalists in social studies. Let's begin. Here are the objectives for this lesson. By the end, you will be able to state why the loyalists came to the Bahamas. List at least three ways the loyalists contributed to the Bahamas. Explain the loyalist impact on the Bahamas and describe how the country has benefited from it. The following are some vocabulary words and definitions you'll need to know for this lesson. Cemetery, a large burial ground. Plantation, an estate on which crops such as coffee, sugar, and tobacco are grown. Independence, the fact or state of being independent. Merchant, a person or company involved in wholesale trade. Architecture, the art or practice of designing and constructing buildings. Who were the loyalists? The loyalists came to the Bahamas after the American War of Independence. He sailed south from St. Augustine in Florida, New York, and other places in the United States. The Loyalists left that country because they did not want to be American. Instead, they wanted to be ruled by Britain. Some Loyalists were carpenters and boat builders, but most of them worked as farmers. They set up large cotton plantations, most of which were located on the family islands. Large amounts of cotton were exported to America. On some islands, after the cotton had been picked in the spring, slaves were made to rake salt from the salt pan. While many of the loyalists set up plantations, others worked as fishermen or as merchants. They mainly settled on the islands of Abaco and Ilufa. Loyalist Architecture The loyalists built Christ Church Cathedral. They also built St. Matthew's Church. These buildings were in the style of those they had left in America. A few houses built by the Loyalists can still be seen today. These houses were similar to those built in New England and the Carolinas and they were made of wood. Balcony House on Market Street in Nassau is a good example. Most Loyalist houses were two stories high. On the ground floor were the storeroom and the servants' quarters. The main rooms were on the first floor. The kitchen was built away from the main house so that heat and cooking odors were kept out of the house. You can see the ruins of Loyalist Plantation Houses at Clifton Heritage National Park on New Providence. The Loyalists brought other things to the Bahamas. For example, they started schools and built roads. A man named John Wells set up the island's first newspaper called the Gazette. Docks and wharfs were improved in Nassau and a marketplace was built with a roof. New streets were made and they were kept clean and in good condition. Before the coming of the Loyalists, the colony of the Bahamas had established a government. The House of Assembly at that time was a group of men or representatives who organized affairs in the Bahamas. Five new members were added to the House of Assembly to represent the new Loyalist settlements. They represented Abaco, Exuma, Andrus, Cat Island and Long Island. 
new laws to protect homeowners from fire and other laws were passed to improve cemeteries which had become overcrowded. When the price of cotton fell, the plantations lost money and some of the loyalists left the islands. Many of them stayed, however, and made a living by keeping sheep and goats. That concludes our lesson on the loyalists, boys and girls. I hope you learned a lot. Until next time!